Graphing quadratic functions using transformations. First of all, a quadratic function is a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And in general, we identify a quadratic function as one that has an x squared as its highest power. So the simplest quadratic function that we can come up with is f of x equals x squared. We're going to start by graphing this function just by plotting points and using this graph to make some comparisons for all of the other graphs that we draw in this section. So starting with x equals negative 3, f of x we would get by squaring negative 3. So I'm going to put the negative 3 in parentheses since I always put negative values for variables in parentheses when plugging them into an algebraic expression. That way I can see that negative 3 quantity squared gives me positive 9. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this whole table so that I have y values 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. I'm going to go ahead and plot these points on my grid and see what the graph looks like. Starting with negative 3, 9, then negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. It looks like these form a parabola. Let's go ahead and draw that. So this is the graph of y equals x squared, and it's a basic parabola. We're going to refer back to this several times throughout this video to see what basic transformations we can make of this graph. Our goal is to get to where we can graph parabolas without filling out a table of values like this one every single time. So we are going to get to where we can figure out what the graph should look like without doing lots of calculations. The first and simplest kind of transformation we're going to consider is what's called a vertical shift. We're going to look at the function f of x equals x squared plus 3 and evaluate it by taking the x squared values that we already calculated on the previous example. So negative 3 squared we said was 9 and then we'll just add 3 to each of those y values. So 9 from the previous example plus our 3, we'll just add 3 to each y. Negative 2 squared we found to be 4, and 4 plus 3 gives us 7. Negative 1 squared we found to be 1, and 1 plus 3 gives me 4. 0 squared was 0, 0 plus 3 gives me 3, and we'll find that we have the same symmetry in this that we had on the first one, since we're getting our same 1, 4, and 9 over again here. Let's go ahead and plot these points on our grid. <clears throat> Starting with negative 3, 12, we observe that that is actually off the grid. We're not going to change our scale to fit these two, negative 3, 12, and 3, 12. These are just off the chart. So we'll skip them. That means I'm going to start with the point negative 2, 7, and then go on to negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 7, and I can see that my negative 3, 12 and my 3, 12 would be up here off the chart a little bit. Connecting these points, I see that I again have a parabola that looks an awful lot like the first one, but that this graph is shifted up three units. Recalling, of course, that our function had a plus 3 after the x squared, it's fairly intuitive that adding 3 to all of our y values will shift the graph up in the positive y direction. We might take a guess what the graph of g of x equals x squared minus 5 would look like at this point. Instead of adding a number to every y value, we would now subtract a number from every y value, and we can guess that this graph would shift down 5 units.
So with these two observations, we can now formalize our rule for a vertical shift. The summary of this rule is that if I am adding a positive number, so in both of these I am assuming k is a positive number, that if I add a positive number, the graph shifts up that number of units, and if I subtract a positive number, that graph shifts down that number of units. Vertical shifts are fairly intuitive. They're the easiest to understand. We will come back to this rule again when we have also looked at horizontal shifts so that we can compare these two rules. We're now going to look at horizontal shifts. The easiest way to draw this first graph is going to be to actually plug in these values for x again. It's not as straightforward to try to use the values we already calculated in our first example this time. So plugging in negative 1 for x gives me negative 1 minus 2 quantity squared, which becomes negative 3 quantity squared which is now my positive 9. Plugging in 0 for x gives me 0 minus 2 quantity squared, which gets me negative 2 quantity squared, which gets me 4. We might at this point guess at the pattern the rest are going to take, but I'll fill in the computations really quickly here. So with everything filled in, we can see that we again have our 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9 pattern in our y values that we saw with the first graph y equals x squared. Let's go ahead and plot these points now. Negative 1, 9, 0, 4, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, 4, 4, and 5, 9. So we again see our parabola. Let's go ahead and connect those. And this time, if we look at the graph qualitatively and try to describe how this changed from y equals x squared, we can see that the graph is shifted right to units. So looking at our original function, f of x equals x minus 2 squared right here, we can see the effect of subtracting 2 from that x variable before squaring shifted the graph to the right. One thing that's a little bit confusing about these horizontal shifts is that they go in the opposite direction from what you might guess from the sign of the number. With our vertical shifts, adding a number made it move in the positive direction, which is up, and subtracting a number made the graph move in the negative direction, which is down. With horizontal shifts, it's the opposite. Now subtracting a number makes the graph move in the positive direction, which is right. And as we might guess, adding a number, so the graph of g of x equals x plus 3, we might now guess correctly that adding a number is going to make this move in the negative horizontal direction, which is left. So this graph would shift left three units. So one thing we need to get used to about horizontal transformations is that counterintuitive direction. The reason that these don't follow what our instinct might tell us is that it's always our convention to solve for the y variable. Because everything is solved for the y variable, the transformations that go in the y direction are fairly intuitive, and the transformations that go in the x direction, where we have not solved for the x variable, are going counter to what we might guess. If you look at an expression like this one, y equals x plus 3 squared, you can imagine if you were solving this for x, at some point you would end up subtracting 3 from both sides, so that if our convention were to solve for x, we would see everything going in the more intuitive direction, which is adding a number moves in the positive direction, etc. Let's now take a look at these rules side by side. The rule for a vertical shift we've already looked at. These are vertical up here. 
This is where if we add a number or subtract a number from the x squared, then we get a vertical shift up or down. This next rule is for horizontal shifts. And there's really four different things going on here, right? So there's four different patterns that we need to see. There's two different distinctions that we have to make. The first is, do we have a vertical or a horizontal shift? And the way that we can tell that is by where that number is added or subtracted. In the vertical shift, that number is added or subtracted after squaring. In a horizontal shift, that number is added or, or subtracted directly to the x variable. So when our number is added to or subtracted from that x variable directly, the movement is in the x direction, which is horizontal. When that number, on the other hand, is added or subtracted after squaring, then it's more like it's being added or subtracted to the y value. That movement is in the y direction. So the first thing that we need to decide when we're looking at a function is whether it's a vertical shift or a horizontal shift. Then within each of those, we need to decide if it's vertical, does it go up or down? If it's horizontal, does it go left or right? It really doesn't work to try and figure everything out at once. We should think first vertical or horizontal, second, which direction?